Hi, good morning, Babak. Hi, Sammy. Good morning, good afternoon. How are you doing? Good. I'm in an airport, so oh. <laughs> okay. you might see a lot of noises here. <laughs> No worries. Uh, these uh, these new headphones are actually really good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in Boston, but uh... so I bought this the Sony one. It has eight microphones and it has oh. noise cancellation, and it's really good. I've I've been in in um, train a lot, and it actually works. Uh, I was gonna ask you a question. I'm sorry when you sent me that request for the speaker profile. I I hadn't I didn't know about the speaker profile, and uh, anyways, I entered it, but I think it was late. So I don't know. No, we, yeah, we got it linked, and I think. Uh, uh, thank you for entering it. Um, yeah, so it should be okay for the proposal. You, yeah. You, okay, and you have one proposal or two proposals? Two, one from Sustainability Work Group. Okay. And one for the um, uh, part of the hardware management. Uh, the work group is called Cloud Service Model. Okay, sounds good. I hope you might have gotten an email. I didn't uh, get an email about this. Uh, I owe, okay. yeah. Okay, maybe there was after the deadline, your name yeah. got uh, added there. I, in fact, uh, in the description, I already put the, your name, but uh, okay. profile was Sounds not good. there. So, so as, I, I'll just make sure, yeah, I was gonna plan to attend the Global Summit anyway, so I'll just okay. go ahead and uh, make sure I do the plan. So that's good, I look forward to to talking okay. to you guys. So, right yeah. now, it is going through the abstract voting process. Yeah. where um, all the project leads uh, get together and uh, decide which decide. one to be selected. Okay. So even though we entered two, we cannot assume all the will be approved. But... Yeah, that's okay. We had a really good panel. Uh, so I, I uh, my conference is ISCA, International Symposium Computer Architecture. We had okay. a really good panel on sustainability at ISCA this year. So it was super well, right. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a lot of attractions going on. People are really interested in talking about it. They That's are, a, they are. Right. Actually, what's it, it, even more interesting, the keynote at uh, at OSDI, which is the uh, flagship operating system conference this year, was also on sustainability. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, so it's okay a good. Pretty hot topic. At, at, at least when it's a lot of traction and uh, people are really paying energy, it's good to kind of... Uh, get the definition done so that uh, yeah. instead of keeping a lot of things open, right? Just yeah. define it and uh, bring it to operational mode, right? Absolutely, Just... yes. So we got... Uh... Arich. Hello, gents, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, great. Hoping Sruti, Eric uh, would join. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, any opens we have before we can uh, have the discussion on the load? Yeah, like before it joined, right? I was just talking to Papa, right? We are going through the uh, abstract voting process, I believe, end of the this week uh, it will be announced. Then uh, finally, we need to start creating the materials. Um, two things uh, on the presentations, um, we would like to get some initial at least draft and uh, let us review the, within the theme here. And the panels also, we need to have some uh, discussion on like what do the things want to achieve out of it and. Uh, Maybe some context and framework we need to set uh, so that people can start preparing uh, some data points for discussions there. But we will do it probably after that approval, all those things are done. Looks like someone joined from my phone. Yeah, that's me, Shruti. Hi, Shruti. Hi, so any uh, open Sruti? No particular opens. I think about one point I dropped you an email and we can close offline. That's more about presenting this work. But otherwise, no particular opens right now. Okay. I do probably may miss to, I need to go back and process and I will respond to you, Sruti.
and if no opens, I think uh, um, what we would like, I would uh, uh, like this team to spend today is we want to kind of close on the definition of uh, uh, the load uh, in IUE. Um, we are uh, using the load as uh, one of the parameters. Uh, if you maybe uh, look at uh, like system IUE, we are saying at particular load, you need to say the number, otherwise it does not have a meaning because if you look at the IUE, it can go overall anywhere from zero to one. At what point we are uh, trying to say that uh, IUE, what load we are telling the IUE, we need to represent that. And uh, for that, we started discussion last week to Sorry, I'm in airport. It's a, a little nice here. Um, so we discussed about idle power, peak active power, peak allocated power, and uh, design power. Um, Sruti, you were there, and perfect. Uh, you were not there, and uh, Rick, you were not there also. Um, yeah, I remember. Right. Um, just I want to recap it so that Babak uh, and uh, uh, Rich knows. So ideal power, we know like until serve, uh, the infrastructure is ready, whatever the power consumed by the system, is, we are calling it as a ideal power. Peak power is the maximum that you can measure. Can be a transient. It may above the peak allocated power. That, that is called peak, peak active power. Peak allocated power is a normal kind of TDP that uh, you define for the system. And uh, design power is it's the same thing as a um, uh, peak allocated power. We're, we're going to, I, I remember a conversation about this a few weeks ago, but we're going to uh, in, intentionally stay away from mentioning TDP. I think that would be a good, good thing to do okay. because the same, same chip, different uh, integrators, you get different numbers. So. Correct, right. It's a system TDP, not chip TDP. And uh, the same thing you can say it for system or it can be rack or depending on how, what is the unit you are trying to put the deficit So with that, what we want to say is for the load, how we want to define the load. We started looking at the performance portion, but anytime when we try to mix performance, we are running into problems. So I want to kind of stay away from performance, but uh, define the load percentage. Anything above zero or maximum, you know, zero and 100 is known. And anything in between we need to define. So for that, I was going through the spec power as a reference, uh, right? The way spec power uh, uh, defines is, you have target workload. In a system, you know what is your maximum throughput you can get. That That's what they're calling it as a 100%. In workload, given you know the maximum percentage of the workload, you can insert uh, delays in the streams and you can um, get a lower number, 90%, 80%, 70%, they can uh, get the throughput. And for that given throughput, they are looking to measure the power, how much power is consumed by for the throughput and temperature and things like that. And that's what they are using when they say, somebody says spec, uh, power 50, 50%, basically 50 means 50%, how much power the system is consuming. In order to achieve this, you have to have a specific setup and you need to run the workload that uh, provided by the spec power or spec uh, uh, body. You cannot define your own and try to put it there, right? But I'm just using this as a kind of reference to kind of see like, is there anything from here we could translate into our definition? 
Um, so spec server, which was a recent addition to spec, the divided up the workloads into three groups of workloads, CPU, memory, and IO. This is a, as of a few years ago. Okay. Yeah. But even that, uh, they probably like, uh, say even the workload throughput, they don't say which workload it is, right? It's all kind of uh, generalized. I think you're right. Maybe if you have three different uh, type of workloads, you want to characterize on all the three so that you can really like pump the memory power or CP power uh, instead of, you may not able to bump both at the same time because you want, if you pump both, you one might throttle, right? Yeah. I mean, in a data center today, except for shared storage, it's basically CPU memory in the network, right? right. Okay. For for the cloud workloads and AI is is accelerators. So, okay. so with that, uh, the way I was kind of looking is, can we put a, a load, a UE load, when we say, maybe instead of saying it's power load rather than just saying load means people kind of thinking it's a performance or a, however it is, right? Um. Then I'm thinking two different options we need to decide which one will work for us. Um, one option is straightforward. Like, you know your peak allocated power and you know your current active power. You just take active power divided by the peak allocated power. Um, power in, say, in fact, it should say multiplied by 100. It'll give you the percentage. That is straightforward mechanism, uh, but only uh, drawback here is, uh, I'll put a hundred letter. Um, until you reach the ideal uh, active power, uh, your uh, IUE will be zero, somewhere here. Only after active power, you start getting workloads that are going to be running, then IUE will start shooting up. But when you look at the percentage, percentage of load compared to the total system, yeah, zero to, I don't know, 5%, 10%, depending on what is your idle power is going to be, right? Until that, it is still, you uh, will be zero. It may be okay, much more straightforward. People can easily visualize that. Um, that is one option. Second option is, what I was thinking is, you know the active power, active power, and you know the ideal power. Anything below ideal power, there is no customer or clothes going to be consuming it, right? It's not going to be running. It's only either you're bringing up the system or uh, infrastructure is running. So this is basically saying, this is a customer. When you run a customer workload, how much power is consuming there? And you know the peak allocated power and the ideal power, so you can separate that. And this is the total power available for a customer. And the top one is how much customer is currently consuming it. And anything hey, below? Sammy, can you... Yeah. Sorry, can you for a second just uh, show the exact definition of active power that you stated on that other slide? Uh, which slide? So on the other slide, I think you were defining all the power terms, right? I oh, just yeah, yeah. To see what it, was we have not defined power. it. We need to define a term for that. No. Oh, OK. OK, I see. That's fine. OK. We have not defined the active power in this time. We've only defined the peak active. OK. Yeah. Okay. The Thank active you. power is basically how much power is consumed with the system, actually. In fact, maybe if you want, we can defend that. Uh, um, why Why were you then saying that in the option one, until they reach the active power, that your IUE would be zero? Essentially, your active power is the system measured power. Yeah, so active okay. power is system measured power. How much power is uh, system is reporting it, right? Yeah, right, it so would be good to define it. 
yeah i'm uh, trying to move my mouse here it's not going anywhere for that yeah we should define it and then also um yeah i'm sort of questioning why are we saying that in option one um uh, till we reach active power first of all i don't know what it means to reach active power then because it's just the system current measured power and we said till that point iue is zero all right hold on mm -hmm. I don't know whether you want to use the word. Currently, um, just the power consumed by system. Is it a better option you want to use uh, active power, different word? This looks yeah. good. This, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sruti, go, go back. I'm sorry, I was trying to type. By, uh... Yeah, I was just trying to understand, you know, knowing that active power is just a current system measured power. Correct. What What did you mean when you said until we reach active power, IUE is zero? So, IUE basically trying to say how much uh, power is going to uh, used for the computer system, right? Until when it's a ideal power, I think if you go back to the definition here, ideal power, no overloads are running, correct? If no overloads are running, by our definition, all the power consumed by the system is uh, is going for a non it side correct if it is non it power all the power is going to non it that means zero i is zero yes it is all the power going to non it side correct so until active power so if power is going from here to there so are, power yeah after, the idle power yeah i mean after the idle power mark then only you will start seeing a uh, uh, ramping up right okay maybe so this is not a clear representation probably see in this case Power load, it will say it will until ideal power. It's going to say like uh, some number, right? So here it's uh, load is zero when uh, you are switched off the system. When the until you reach ideal power, still it's going to say some power load is some percentage, right? Right. But IUE will still stay at zero because no workloads are running. Okay. Yeah. So then maybe we want to say active power is the system measured power after the idle power mark right that is how the IUE that is, is the bottom one uh, option two that's what i'm trying to say but then in the option one why are we saying that the iue will like mathematically it will not come out to be zero right no iue will be zero so active IUE power will is just... be zero yeah power load won't be so active Take, IUE is zero means active power in your option one should be zero, right? In the equation. An active power can be, see, we, so let us not change the active power definition. What we said is active power is nothing but currently measured power. Right. Okay. So right. We, if you stay with the definition, active power is your wall power, whatever you are measuring on uh, for the system, right? Correct. So it can measure zero when a system is switched off. It may measure like ten uh, percent if your uh, idle power is ten percent of your TDP, right, or the Correct. peak active power. Yes. 
until you reach the 10, there's no real workloads are running. So IE will stay at zero. But mathematically, it won't stay at zero, right? Like it we said. It will stay at zero. So, so we said. Go back to the definition of. Uh, in the idle uh, part. Yeah. So in the idle part, we said, suppose the active power shows up as 10%. So that means mathematically, it will be 10% upon the peak active power. Correct. Which will not be zero. Which is, you're talking about, uh, which is not zero. Load is not zero. Load is not zero. IUE is zero. By IUE the way, zero. it's perfectly fine for IUE to be zero at a high load until you reach idle power. I, I don't have a problem with that. Why is that a problem? Your power load is zero. You're, right. you're consuming power. You know, the, the power load keeps, keeps going. Right to whatever amount IUE remains zero because you know you're not loading the server. Yeah, so the power load is not coming zero in this case. Right, it right? keeps so going it's not forward. Coming. Yeah, it moves yeah. forward until you reach the idle power. Yeah, so if the power load is not zero, uh, maybe we pull out the IUE definition again. If the power load is not zero, uh, mathematically, how is IUE coming zero? So the definition of IUE is, um, if you go back to IUE definition, right? Let's uh, look at this definition itself. Yeah. Uh, no, this is, uh, let me go here. It's, um, I think, uh, let me slap in the system IUE definition. So this is uh, the definition what we said. Mm -hmm. It's basically like how much power is coming, that's total power coming to the system, mm -hmm. minus non-IT power, that is thermal power, power conversion loss, and the idle power. That is ideal. So... Okay, I see, because, okay, so assuming other terms are zero, the idle losses are still going to exist. Correct. Okay. Okay. So that's why you see that graph, uh, what we are trying to show there, right? It's not, it's going to stay at uh, low for a while. Then only when you reach idle power, then you start shooting up. But in the same thing, if you want to draw the, I didn't have a chance to draw a picture for this one, right? If we say that um, the load, we are starting from this point instead of uh, this point like what we have, then you, your graph is going to look like you moved a little bit, uh, uh, right, like, uh, like this. So long. So your graph is start, starting here, right? You're ignoring the idle power until idle power is nothing is measured, right? For the second one, option two. So then uh, when you draw the IUE for the second one, it's going to look like, it's going to jump like this and it's, it's going to go and uh, go something like this, right? So in that uh, way, when you are looking at it, it's, it looks uh, kind of this load also what you are uh, going to define here. It's when you say percentage, you are talking about uh, percentage of power given to the work loads. My question is, this is feels much easier to explain and uh, easy to kind of understand. But this seems to be really like 
when our cloud is running, we are trying to measure the IUE. Until that, you know, we are not measuring IUE, right? I think it's better for IUE to be defined when power load is basically be below the idle power, and it should be defined as zero. Okay. So then what you're saying, uh, Babak, is if you go with option one, as long as we say below ideal power is going to be, it will be zero. Yeah, because you, the, when we measure it, we need to know what is a proper load to reach before this thing actually plays a role. Right. So then for the definition perspective, can we just say simply, when we say IEE load means it's nothing but power load, it's a factor of um, active power to the peak load, uh, allocated power. Because we do need to put the definition for load here. Right now, um, it's a sim the definition basically says non-IT versus uh, IT. But for comparison purpose, what we said is unless we put the load here, people cannot compare. Like on a 50%, I'm giving you an IUE. Then you can compare system to system. Until that, you can you cannot really like understand what uh, how much load you are telling the IUE to compare the systems, right? So are we okay with uh, going with this? I basically like I had a few other discussion with few other people, and I think um, they're aligning with this, and just want to make sure that we are uh, okay with this, we can align here. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think it makes the definition more uh, easy to understand that, you know, you need you need a certain amount of load before IUE kicks in. Got it. Yeah, and, and, and it will work. It will work to specify IUE with a load associated, you know, add an associated load, as long as we are very clear about what kind of load we need, power load versus CPU or performance load. It's uh, that's what uh, Eric. Thanks for joining. Uh, we want to say it's a uh, power load, and how you get the power load is uh, up to the system, right? I. I know you. When you start uh, drawing the picture, you it may not be line like this. You may get a kind of bell, kind of curve, or like a. Um, once you put the definition on, like it's a CP load or memory load and other things, it again complicates much further, right? Well, we we either want system percent of peak performance or system percent of peak power. We just have to be careful. Be system explicitly clear about which one. Right? System perspective of peak power. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you did here. I, I heard the last 15 minutes of this. So I just, just want to make sure that if we def, if we define IUE as having an associated load percent, we are clear in the definition of and documentation of IUE percent of what? Right? Yeah. Okay. So it's a, what we want to say is system active power is this definition, are we good or? A... I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a viable alternative. I don't have any good reason to object to it. Yeah. Right, right. And it's much simpler to describe and uh, the bottom one, it's kind of complicated, right? Um, and we just need to say it's so we are going to be ideal that way. So if, if you are really okay, I think I hope uh, Jeff was here uh, today. I think uh, what I was kind of looking for is if you are aligned with this one, what else is really needed to complete the IUE um, definition uh, red uh, parameters, right? What I'm thinking is, all the numbers, if you, if you look at this one, 
it's How already present. What the idle power is. Come, come again, uh, Eric. Um, <clears throat> for purposes of you know the observer of the system, right? Right. Um, how do you find out what the idle power is? Yeah, that's what Whatever, we say. Everything else can be empirically measured, right? But you're supposed to plug in an idle number. That right. had to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? So this is what we are saying is um, either you put uh, statically your uh, um, putting on the system. Who puts it statically? Value Where do they put it statically? It's the estimated value based on data set. Right, but placed where by whom, right? Okay, so for example, if you are um, uh, building a system based on your uh, measurements, you basically come up with a number and uh, you can populate a red fixer property with this data. That is one option. Another option is we are saying dynamic, meaning uh, it's a measured during boot time you have to account for um, uh, any hard plugs or anything that uh, going to happen in the system data, right? But during boot, you can, uh, uh, you know, like no workloads are running and you can basically make the system, it's ideal, right? It's nothing is running, right? No workloads are running. And you can measure that number and uh, report to the Redfish and the uh, Redfish uh, can keep the number uh, within the system. Right, I think what's what's concerning me, right, is, is that um, we are now starting to mandate that some particular uh, path of software has to run on every system. Where does that software come from? How is it audited? But, right, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out it, and maybe we could do this from an OCP perspective. We certainly can say, you know, define this is where the idle power goes in a Redfish, um, in, in a Redfish data definition. And we can specify that that's part of the profile that's required, not optional for OCP compliance and all that good stuff, right? So we can, we can create a place where the idle power value lives. And we can, we can do this and document uh, a methodology whereby uh, it is mandatory to measure your idle power uh, according to some process, right? But now we're requiring code to run on the system. No matter right. whose system it is or where the code came from, um, that's the part that's bothering me, right? So, Eric, we have to have a way of measuring all of the terms we're defining, not just idle power. Right, so we have a list of terms that Sammy is using in his power load percentage equation. We need to def we need to have a way of measuring all these numbers. Right, and when one of the things we were after Babak was was uh, we're going to mandate you can't do it today, right? But on a future OCP profile compliance system, there will be an API through which you can measure the active power of the system. Yeah. Right. 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 And and as long as there is an orchestrator somewhere that can get to that API, you can get an active power for the system. But that's different than saying, you know, thou shalt at stage X of boot, go measure this and put it here. Right. So, right. Now, now so act, software active. you run on the system, not remote from the system, right? You're not making something right. available that you can go enforce later. You're trying to enforce something about the way the system is constructed or provisioned, and provisioned is very, very hard. That's why I'm pushing. I, I agree with you. So for idle, we need to have a prescribed sort of uh, methodology for what what are you measuring? When what we mean by idle? Well, we need the same thing for peak. So when Sam, Sammy's slide had a bunch of terms, active, mm -hmm. we understand we need that in the future. But he also has a bunch of terms around peak. Right. And we did talk about that a little bit, right, before, where we said we, you know, we periodically look for the highest power ever observed. And if a peak got, had to get updated, we'd update it. Right. We talked okay. about that. But we didn't really talk about how it was going to be done. How it can be done. So maybe, Sammy, you need a few slides about methodology, not, not just metrics, which is how do you properly measure these terms that 
we're talking about here. Well, and I'll tell you why I'm concerned, right, Sammy? Um, so suppose you could do this out of band, right? You could set some flags so that the next time the system reboots, you go measure its idle power, right? Mm -hmm. um, at, at the fleet scale of the hyperscalers, you know, if you went back and tried to do that on every system in the fleet, it would take you know a couple handfuls of full-time employees a whole year to do it. These no, fleets no, no. are massive. Right, you can't log into machines and measure stuff. That does yeah. not work. Yeah, you don't need to. Today, when the BIOS hands up to the OS, right, there is a the flag uh, set up to say like, yes, I am handing off here, right? And uh, you could potentially still uh, define something where you are not ready to run the workload, uh, right? You are still. Uh, uh, bring the infrastructure yeah, I don't think that's reality defined though, right? That's too soon, right? Mm -hmm. we, we got you got uh, three sets of problems you're worried about, probably more, right? You've you've been around this block many times, right, Sammy? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. The first, you have to have the power control in the configuration it is going to be in, which may be overridden by the OS, right? So P state and C state control and those kinds of things may not be the way the OS is going to leave them. Um, the uh, the software and all the network connections associated with uh, the idle platform state for the for the the server as it's going to be provisioned. None of that stuff is on there yet when the when the UEFI bootloader hands off you know post over to the OS. Right, that's that's not the right place to measure this. It's not the definition you gave. Right. So I think that's where the thing. Right. We want to do the static one. There is a possibility, but people can I don't say know, like the static one said either, right? You still need magically somebody to put a value somewhere. Yeah, that is uh, generally like when you develop the system, right? You know what is the ideal power is going to be, right? As long as you define the methodology properly, you measure it. <laughs> I would contend. <laughs> yeah, eighty percent of the system shipped today, the person that shipped it did not know its idle power by this definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Today's system, it will say like, I don't know the ideal power, right? When you, you, you don't have both, right? If you take today's system, you don't even have a red face options to report it. Even if you implement it, it will say like, oh, I don't know. Like, uh, it will say like, I don't have the data, right? Right. Well, we can, think we can do something like, you know, uh, potentially provocative and, and controversial, right? We could say you have to run CERT and plug in the CERT idle number, and that's the static number. Right. You could do that, right? Right. So manufacturers on some of the SKUs run CERT today. Right. So that, that's a version of idle, but not the one you're talking about, right? That's not idle as you have defined it. Your active idle isn't exactly the same as the CERT idle. Yeah, I think that's bad, right? Methodology need to be... Uh, we need to well, agree on that. I'm pushing on it. I, I don't think we can wave our hands and say magic happens and there's an idle value, right? If we're going to talk about how IUE works, we have to talk about how the idle value that IUE uses got created. I, I, I suggest that we dedicate at least one or two meetings to talk about methodology. I think we shouldn't shove methodology under the rug. It shouldn't right. be an add on to this conversation. I think it's important to define the metrics. And I think Eric has a point. If there are metrics that are not measurable, we have to be careful. But if we can have a proper conversation about what we prescribe as methodology, then we can just, you know, then we can decide, right? If the, it, there, it fixes, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with it, right? I think what we were trying to align here is at high level definition, are we aligned? Now let's start uh, diving deep into the methodology of how do we do that, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I, I thought I was staying with the tour. Right. Yeah. I think right. As we, so if we, if we align on how, uh, how power load is defined and how mm -hmm. IUE makes use of the, the power load term, right. right. Now we need to talk about, okay, how is this actually going to work in the wild? Which is what we're doing, right? We started into that conversation. I just ran into trouble immediately on the idle power because I've never really understood how we were going to do that. Right. Right. I've obviously been thinking about this for a while, right? So I think, like uh, we are saying, right? If we are aligned here, first let us say, hey, do we have a static method, static mechanism, 
and uh, one of the option is uh, spec uh, power. Yeah, uh, what, I just threw it out there as something that right. could yeah. work, right? Everybody yeah. would know what you meant if you said third idle, right? It right. doesn't right. mean that's what we want, but that is a viable definition that exists. Right. Now, right. the thing, the, the definition we've been throwing around is a little bit more like, you know, pornography. I know it when I see it, right? We, we talked about what state we're talking about on the system and we know what we mean. But right. we don't actually have a good hardware defined way to say I'm in that state and this is the power, you know, and here's the flow that captured it, put it somewhere so we can now use it in calculation. Yeah, I, I don't know what exact point you joined, uh, Eric. We were kind of started that uh, discussion with the A. We we looked at the spec uh, power, and we said it is basically using a throughput, right, to define the percentage. And even there, I think it defines uh, what is the active uh, idle uh, thing, right? We can take yeah, that definition. It's a version of idle as well, right? Where it's zero percent of peak load demanded, right? Then the power is not zero, right? Because remember the the way that spec defines thirty, fifty, seventy is you know it, it runs SSJ ops, right? Um, good, good. Uh, up to as, as many as you can get on the system says that's a hundred, and then it backs off at the client side. And request right. 90, 70, 50 percent of that peak JOPS number, right. and it measures the power associated with that throughput. But Got there's it. a lot of problems with, not the least of which that that spec power is 16 years old, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a. Uh, and, 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 and I want to be very clear, right? If we're requiring everybody run spec power on their system in its production config, that's a big requirement. Yeah, th that's a that's another thing, right? You have to. Uh run uh, the workload that uh, they created by the spec power um, body, right? And you really need to make sure that all those things uh, need to be gone through. Um, but here, I think we should, we could use a definitions to match that and uh, our OCP side, they, we can really define, okay, here is some mechanisms that, uh, how are you going to measure it? Then as long as you comply with it, that you you can uh, even if you look at the a lot of red face definition, right? It's a definition yeah, I, I is there. We, we need the first prototype. Um, here is a a way to measure it written down, right. and we right. can work from there, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so and, and I'm concerned so, so, that so, if I I'm so, concerned so, with so, the methodology that's going to require us. So if I deploy a thousand machines the next week, uh, I'm going to have to have somebody log into each of those thousand machines while it's booting to tell it to do something. I don't think that's a viable methodology. So you're basically looking at a dynamic. It's very difficult to, to implement. You need a static. If it's dynamic, it needs to be automated is what I'm saying. Correct. 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 You need to be automated under the way what you are providing uh, things, right? Like you can say like no PF open platform uh, group, right? You can say like you must provide a ideal power measurement as part of your uh, uh, stuff. Then you also need to say like here is the mechanism you have to use. And well, PMC and, and, and there are a couple other considerations here that we need to throw on the table, right? Um, if we require that on your first ever boot that you run spec power, that means everybody needs a spec license. Either spec power or you need to have something equivalent. Yeah, well, that won't work, right? We, we can't mandate everybody needs a spec license. That's right, know. right. That's what I'm saying. Something equivalent, right? You, yeah. you have to come up yeah, with some I, definition. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We just have to write down a methodology correct. instead and see does this look like it can work, right? Correct, correct, correct. And, correct. and right now, I don't have in my mind a methodology that's bothering me. Okay. So I think that's that's where, right? I mean, once we align our definition here, then we can go back to the open platform firmware and uh, hardware management uh, and say like, now can we get that uh, defined and uh, make it as a part of OCP uh, firmware definitions so that they can develop and run and uh, make sure that it is uh, really operationalable, right? Right, right. With with the challenge, right, that if it's if it's a if it's under firmware control, right. the firmware has to do it before it hands off control to the OS. Then we're not right. going to get the idle definition that we wanted because the idle definition we wanted was post OS. 
Yes. Then there's a, it's basically what you were saying is infrastructure is running, but workloads are not running, right? Yeah, which which software knows. There's an orchestrator Correct. something that knows it. Correct. The orchestrator that knows it is not on this system, and it's certainly not in the firmware of this system. Correct, correct. Then we have to define a, a mechanism, right? Yep. Or if we, if you say like, oh, we cannot do that, what is the best alternative? Yep. Is yep. there any alternative to the out other than these two, right? Yeah, well, we need we need options for the methodology too, right? This this Correct. this slide just says methodology TBD, right? right, um, right. But well, we will need options for the methodology, and we need to find one that you know the broad population here uh, agrees is viable. Correct. Correct. Can we quickly hash out methodology for these various metrics? Yeah, let's Perfect. start uh, putting uh, some. Um... Uh, mechanism. I also let, let, let me ping Jeff. He probably have some lot of uh, uh, things based on uh, his work uh, he has done. Let us put uh, some methodology. I think uh, we. I think now looks like we are kind of aligning on uh, most of the at least the early definitions. Now we need to expanding the methodology so that we can operationalize it. Right. 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 And even for this, is there anything other than static and dynamic? Right. And we can come back and say like a hey, dynamic, it's uh, really difficult to uh, get it uh, deployable because I don't want to system to halt uh, or taking additional seconds, then it's all uh, coming into the picture of uh, losing time, right? Just come for computing this, right? If your boot time increases, then people will not like it. Right. Well, that's why I was I was careful to right. qualify my statement, right? You know, maybe maybe it's okay if the first ever boot does some extra stuff, right? right. But but it's it's <laughs> it's only gonna be it's only gonna have the dynamic property you wanted if it gets called when something changes, right? Not just the first time it ever boots. If you check to see if there was a value loaded and if there wasn't, you did something. And then once there's a value loaded, you never did it again. It's effectively static. Right. right. But in fact, if you look at today, a lot of things like uh, you have slit and HMAT and other things putting latencies, right? Those numbers, yes, it's uh, if you can calculate and put it, then it's uh, exact, right? But a lot of people, what they do today is they basically like uh, um, put the pre-computed numbers, right? Then it's basically provide a hint rather than a yeah, final number. Then you could probably rerun. Uh, based on that, you can allocate your policies and you can re rerun your, your uh, measurements and you can really compute the number later. Maybe I think that's what we should uh, provide. Like here is a starting number, then you need to have some dynamic method, like whenever what we are saying is the lowest absurd idle power or something like that, right? We said, right? Right, right, something like that. And and and, and uh, to be you know less truculent, right? I think um, the uh, we know that at least the meta team is doing this already, right? Because they when when they did their HUE proposal a couple of global summits ago, right? right. They were talking about. You know, the reason they were proposing that idle power get called out is because they did that already as of two years ago, where when they released a new software platform, right, the, the Facebook.com infrastructure software, if the idle power went up, they rejected the release and somebody had to go clean it up. Right. So they already had a methodology where the the orchestrator was loading the same software on all the systems, booting the rack, looking at the rack's power and saying, no, that's too much. <laughs> right. Um, but it, it's re so there, there is a way to do this that's a, just a little more complicated. It has a lot of moving parts, right? Where, um, where the only way to get that uh, updated, you know, highest observed idle power is to is to have it done from a remote, you know, unspecified agent outside of the system, right? Where it comes in and says, "Okay, this is your idle state. Measure your power and put it here in this idle power tracking location," right? And that has to be a remote signal to the firmware. At runtime, right? Uh, right. So, like, 
EMC observes the power, right? It can see the power at any time. It just doesn't know when to call it idle. Got it, right. Someone has to tell it this is your idle state. It, yeah, your uh, lowest idle uh, thing, then uh, you can you can basically miss it, right? Well, you have to be told when you're idle. The BIOS does not know when you're idle. Yeah, BIOS Probably. does not know. Yeah, yeah. So you need to have the mechanisms uh, for uh, the like kernel, signaling. The kernel doesn't know when it's idle either. Yeah, you need to have mechanism to signaling from host to BMC to say like, okay, I may not idle, mess it, right? God, I think, yeah, I think either over the management network or the primary network, you need a way to be signaled, this is your idle state. Right. Capture your power. And I believe the Jeff's thing is a uh, minimum active power absurd after system boot process is completed. Right? Observe from where, by whom, through which mechanism, right? That's the methodology we need it's, to figure. It's a BMC. Nope. Cool. How does it, so the, the BMC can, uh, can observe every power for every second from the time it's powered on. It has no idea which observation is idle. Right. Okay, what you're saying is from the reset, uh, uh, no, after booting, after system is booted, so BMC knows. So BMC hands off to the to the kernel after post, right? Correct. Calls, calls the bootloader. Correct. Okay. And after that, whatever the power you're observing lower, that's what uh, Jeff said, uh, is idle power. Yeah, I don't think that will capture the number we want, though, right? Because the, the idle we're after is higher than the power at the time of handoff. So if I capture the handoff power, I'm I'm capturing a value that's too low. And when you hand off, it's going to be higher, right? Why will it be higher? Um, it depends. Because you are, it is loading a lot of things. So... Uh, it's uh, reading all the systems and uh, uh, the bootloader and everything and trying to hand up, right? It's not processing a lot, but still uh, memory activities are going on. After you hand up? During, during post, yeah, but but at the time you call 19 or whatever, however UEFI, UEFI hands off, right? Um, I'm obviously old in terms of how BIOSes work. You're, you're, you're modern, I'm not, right? But, but at the time of handoff to the OS, there isn't much going on, right? If we have a a 384 logical processor system, none of those, you know, only a couple of those processors are doing anything. All the memory is idle. If fan control, you know, if fan dynamic speed control is enabled, then it better be. The fans are not doing much, right? We're at a pretty low power point when we hand off to the OS. Correct. But once you hand it off, right? So if we capture that value, we capture the value that's too low relative to the way you describe your active yeah, idle. Yeah, we, we need to measure it. After you hand off, what is the lowest you can go, right? You can go P6 uh, should be lower than that number, actually, PC6. Well, you're assuming PC6 is enabled. Okay. It's, uh, if it is not enabled, then also, then you uh, you are going to observe a number uh, much higher than uh, what uh, we're handing off, right? Once so you hand up, there are, like at least one million, there are like 20 million servers in the wild, and, and uh, a few thousand of them have PC6 enabled today. So, so, so let us, okay, let us, uh, let us do some measurement and also define the method, methodology so that we can look at the numbers and uh, we can make a decision on. Uh, okay, so, so your proposal, one of your proposals for. Uh, for a potential methodology is, is we empirically satisfy ourselves that the that the, the actual active power, active idle we want is lower than the handoff power. So if after handoff, we keep looking for the lowest value, we will get the one we want. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not sure it is, but it might. That, that's what Jeff suggested last time. And uh, we said like, Yes, I think uh, that is would work, but uh, we do need to really make sure that what is the, is it a single number we can come out of it or we have to keep looking lowest number, right? And, we and need if, to... if somebody actually 
uh, pursues a, a change in methodology where they put machines into S3 or S5 at some future state, are we going to capture that power in call it idle because it's lower? Or is there a way to stop that from happening? So there's two, two ways, right? One is, do you want to do it for a currently running system and uh, keep capturing the lowest number? Or we want to put a, a static number to start with, right? Then you want to basically the number you want to calculate. This is a mechanism to start, uh, calculate, like a spec power, right? You want to do your off, offline work and get the number, then finally put it as a static number. Or can you even be able to get everything at the boot itself? With the correct numbers without yeah, doing any it's additional things. Possible right? for us to to make a proposal where the system has to be told, but now right. we are going to have to go normalize the procedure of what it is they're supposed to tell you, right? Right. Because um, we just made it much harder. Now the system is not self sufficient, right? The system needs help from outside the system, and in order to be compliant, the way that you do that has to be compliant, and we we'll have to specify what that means. Correct. Right. I think that that's what we need to give a create two or three options or whatever the options we yeah, can come yeah. up with, right? Then we need to align on which one we want to recommend. Yep. And and I think you can automate all this. I, I do think we're going to end up in a in a little bit more complex operational scenario where the, an agent outside of the system has to tell you uh, to load the current power measurement as the idle power. And, okay. and maybe you, maybe because you, you know you, you need to be able to do what, whatever the IUE process is, you need that process to be. Uh, we want that process to be viable or working prior to that point. We have to have a default static value too until we're told what a, a better one. Right? Uh, that's okay. one possible way to do this. Right? Is that you 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 get loaded uh, BIOS loads a value in there that it got from somewhere, right? Some lookup table or whatever. Um, when it when it posts, and then it can be told to to update the idle power at any time, and we have rules for how you tell them, you know, under what circumstances you tell the machine to update the idle power, right? And that, and that triggers a flow that that, right. that updates that default value to a better value that you want. To use. Right. I think Fair that will, I think that will work. It's just complicated, right? This infrastructure now you have you know, a dependency and rules for how this system is orchestrated. Right? That's okay. It's just complex. That's all. Right. I, even if you put a static number, we are we know we are not going to be happy with it, right? Even right. if you put a running number, we are not going to be happy with it, right? <laughs> well, <What? laughs> we just we just want to make sure that, you know, we, we do want to be sensitive to how, right. wh whether you detect or don't detect when you're being gamed, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, you want to make sure that definition allows for when people are gaming, then you still detect it, right? Right. right. Ideal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you I can, think, yeah, I think that's why he, thing, he was saying. I'm, I'm guessing the, the, you know, our partners won't like it if it's an honor system thing. I think they want it to correct. be audible. Correct, correct, correct. correct, correct. See, so I think probably like uh, we need uh, some really clear, uh, methods on a idle power. I think this is probably a bigger number we are going to be dealing with. Right. And, uh, and, and we need we need what you did, right? Where we, we have a you know a kind of an unequivocal definition of what we're after for the idols, the idle power that we want. And then we have to have some methodology whereby um, the system, the environment that the system is in plus the capabilities of the system actually capture that number. Got it. Got it. Okay, let us, I uh, think we are already top of the hour. Let us, I think, uh, start uh, going through the methodology going forward. I think uh, we should uh, really make, uh, knock out this ideal power on and the methodology, how are we going to do it? Let hey, me talk hey. with Jeff and if anybody else has ideas, uh, let us uh, collect that and- uh, I think Rich is trying to get a point in. I just I wanted to say, I think that process you guys just went through of defining what is time zero and what happens in what order 
mm -hmm. for the layman for the is an exceptionally valuable slide to add. Okay. Meaning here's the generic boot process in air. Here's the generic boot process for an immersed server. See how they're slightly different with the BIOS and what it's doing. Um, I think those two slides are going to be exceptionally valuable to providing context here. Everything you guys are doing is awesome. I just think that that whole discussion you just had, if you had a a timeline of how boot happens, that would be very helpful. I, I agree with that, but I also think that we need a methodology for all the other metrics as well. And this, you do. Is, this is a difficult yep. one. You yeah. do, you do, but just, just teeing it up to get everybody in the 80% zone of where are you guys at? That would be very helpful. Yeah, and, and that would be a good update. I agree, Rick. Even if we're not done yet, that's a good update, right? To show, you know, this is what we're thinking and kind of where we are in the process, right? Because even the thing crunching on me right now is how we modify BIOS for immersion and how that's altering a bunch of prior assumptions about how computers work. And so as we start to performance tune, we're going to come back to OCP and say, well, maybe we need a standard on this. Maybe it shouldn't be a bunch of hacks in the BIOS. So anyway, that's the right. Concept. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good point. I think we should uh, define it and also go back and measure it and uh, one feel comfortable before we can say like, this is, I think we'll agree there, right? Well, and it also gives us maybe a, an option to to consider, Sammy, some of the stuff you already put up for consideration, right? Like, I don't, you know, not all the fans belong to this one server and our conversion doesn't belong to this one server. So how do I get the the piece of that that it's part of this server's idle power? We may this methodology could give us a way to do that. Uh, granted, it'll have to be a little more complex, right? Right, right. right. Where somebody can know is measuring a couple things and then telling us what our idle power fraction is, right? Yeah, especially sad things becomes complicated, right? I think that uh, yeah, we need to model but, but this. We, yeah, we need it to work with all the different form factors that OCP right. defines. Right, 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 yeah. right. Which you've already you already stated that it's not like you don't know it. It's just you know as, yeah. as we get into I, the I, weeds here on on a conversation like this, we have to come back out and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say include all the uh, OCP form factors. Right, right. Yep, that's probably enough to remember what we need. Yeah, I think Chad, this is a so complicated one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that may force us to go outside and have somebody right. tell us what our idle power is anyway, right? Which right, right. That's, a, that's a workable methodology. It's just complicated. Right, right. Okay, let us uh, continue the discussion uh, uh, next week. Thank you. It's a really good uh, discussion today. Uh, uh... All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tim.